Hello! Ah, you know, it's hard to believe it's been 30 years since Nintendo first released the original Game Boy. And that's probably because it hasn't been, it's been around 24 years. But hey, my lying aside, Nintendo know what they're doing with this kind of thing. They have released an awful lot of handheld consoles over the years, and indeed this one, the very first one that had interchangeable games that didn't make you want to die when you played them. And they've released many iterations of their other machines as well, with backlights and colours and other such exciting things. I remember queuing up to buy the Game Boy Advance SP on the day of release, mainly because I wanted to actually play the Game Boy Advance games I had, which I couldn't on the normal Game Boy Advance because the screen was so fucking dark. Anyway, this moves us slightly sideways into the Nintendo 2DS. Oh hooray, it's another 3D. Wait a minute, what have you done, Nintendo? Yeah. Um, this was one of those things that people thought might actually happen when the 3D didn't go down too well. They would release a cheaper version of the system with the 3D entirely removed. And that is indeed what has happened. In fact, plays in 2D. It's a bit like they're actually advertising the fact, hey, none of that 3D here. Hey, you know the whole unique selling point? Yeah, forget all that. We know you didn't like it. Well, some people did. They probably didn't like the way it decimated the battery life and the frame rate, but uh, there we go. So, Nintendo 2DS. It looks like a big slab of something, that's for sure. This is the black and blue one, as it has been viciously beaten. Look, it even warns you there's violence on the packet. Something interesting. Uh, somebody came up with a theory, they told me, and said, oh, you know the 2DS is designed for younger children because you're not supposed to play on a 3DS if you're six years or younger, because it can mess up your retinas. So, by releasing a 2D system, they can therefore target younger children. Peggy 7. Maybe not. So, what do they say on the package then? They say it's got a little screen and a big screen. Yeah, I'm aware of that. What do you get inside then? A Nintendo system, an AC adapter, a stylus, a 4GB SDHC memory card. Thanks, that's quite good. Normally they demand you buy extra things like that. Six AR cards, operations... Ma We've seen all this before. Software compatible with this system? 3DS, DS and DSi software. That's pretty nice. Note, all software, including Nintendo 3DS software, will be displayed in 2D only. Hmm, fair enough. I want it to be displayed in 1D. That'll be the next version, the 1DS, where there's just an infinitely thin line that you have to watch and play. Anyway, enough of that guff. Let's look at the actual unit, shall we? Here it is. It's black, it's blue, and frankly it's a bit poo as compared to the other versions. But hey, let's have a proper look. So, it's, yeah, wedge-shaped. I think the word we're looking for is ugly, frankly. It's not the best looking of things. In fact, when I first saw a picture of this system, I thought, ah, how kind of Nintendo to do my job for me. But of course, the point is, it's cheap. It's uh, cheaper to produce and therefore cheaper to sell on to us, the end monkeys. Um, we've got the left and right buttons, obviously. We've got the face buttons. We've got the D-pad. We've got the analog nub thing. We've got a camera in the top. We've got start and select buttons. We have power. We have a sleep mode, which is quite important because um, pretty Previously, the sleep mode on the 3DS, of course, with the clamshell design was to close it, and some games demand that you do that. Obviously, that's physically impossible with this, so you switch the sleep thing over as well. Let's stop talking about that now. I've just noticed there's a Union Jack being reflected in the screens. So that's a cushion up there. Mm, look at that, how strangely patriotic. Um, you've got headphones on the bottom, you've got guff written on the back, and bizarrely, the 3D camera is still here, presumably for full hardware compatibility, but uh, of course you can take 3D pictures but not display them in 3D on this, meaning you just looks like you're taking really low quality shit pictures. So that's a bit odd. Volume on the side, lanyard hole, and a stylus for poking in the eyes of your enemies. Right then, how does it weigh up? Well, cheap. 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 Chirpy, chirpy, cheap, cheap. That's the idea behind it, as we said, so they can sell it cheaper. And yeah, they have skimped a bit. It doesn't feel anywhere near as uh, nice and solid as Nintendo stuff usually does. I'm not saying it feels cheap like a bloody pop station or something, but it sort of lacks the nice uh, glossy feel they've been having. On the plus side, that does mean it doesn't pick up every bloody fingerprint in the world, so, you know, swings and roundabouts. Uh, the buttons for the top here are all right. This is absolutely fine. It's exactly the same as on the other 3DS systems. This is horrible. It's sort of a bit loose and uh, 
mm, just doesn't feel the quality of the 3DS and XL versions. Neither of these buttons are a little bit floaty and less definite action. So again, cheaper but to be expected, I suppose. Other buttons are all right. Well, actually, these are quite nasty, but how often do you press start and select? That's not a massive problem. In here is where the games go. Did we discuss that? And yeah, it does literally come with a 4 gig card installed SD-wise, which is very kind of it. Um, how does it feel in the hand? I'm not entirely convinced by this, to be honest. Um, quite awkward for me. In fact, it's virtually impossible for me to use that and press the button, because my finger's sort of too far up. I think if you, if you had very small hands, you would have trouble with this. And if you've got quite big hands like me, you've got trouble as well. I think if you've got medium-sized girly hands, this is probably a really good size. But uh, for me, the 3DS XL is definitely the one that I will be plastering in my mitts when I want to play games. The screens. There aren't screens. There, that's a strange statement. But as you may be aware, there's a technically only one screen behind this, and they break it up using the uh, bezel here. And yes, indeed, it's just the software that controls what's being shown on them. Isn't that bizarre? Obviously, another way of making it much cheaper. I'd be interested to know, actually, if it was exactly the same size as the screen from the Wii U controller pad. I don't think it is, but uh, that would be brilliant, wouldn't it? Just using exactly the same setup they've already got. Massive savings, very clever. But hey, it does the job, just not in 3D. So I suppose something we have to ask is, how important is the 3D to you? Well, they estimate that roughly 20% of people can't see the effect or it gives them a horrible headache anyway, so if you're one of them, don't worry about it. But to be brutally honest, pretty much everybody I know just uses the 3D as an occasional gimmick, and all the time the slider is right down the bottom to off. So, yeah, I don't really see that being a massive problem for most people. Indeed, Nintendo aren't shy about the fact that this is 2D, to say the least. Um, something that's not so good, though, you see that? That's the crappy mono speaker. The 3DS and, of course, the XL have nice stereo speakers that sound quite good. This has a single mono speaker that sounds a lot less good. Something I'm not going to demonstrate, because that is not going to be picked up well by the camcorder, but uh, if you're going to be using headphones anyway, fair enough. Another question, battery life. Well, this has exactly the same battery as the 3DS, so has exactly the same battery life as the 3DS if you've got the 3D off. There we are, that was exhaustive. And other than that, to be honest, there's not a whole lot to say about it. I mean, it won't fit in a pocket. That's a serious problem for a portable system, unless you have very large pockets. And then, of course, you've got to make it bigger, because you're going to have to put it in a case, because, of course, you can't close it up so the screens will get scratched. So that's a little bit of a bugger. I'll tell you what, we will turn it on, because there is one difference which you need to see. On it goes. Slowly. It's burst into life. I'll tell you what's new. If you click here, in this little corner, on the spanner, you can now select screen brightness, which is quite useful. There we are, if you're sitting in the cinema and it's very dark, you can have it on the lowest and play Pokemon while those insufferable bloody Kevin Bacon ads are on. Or you can turn the wireless on and off, because there is no physical switch for it on this one, so it's in the software. And that's it. Everything else is the bloody same. Um, I don't know what game I've got in here. Actually, I was testing with... Oh, Ridge Racer 3D. There we are. A slightly... Shut up. A slightly weak game that's only exciting because of the 3D, so that's probably the worst thing I could have possibly put in here. Go me. So yeah, there we be. 2DS. It's cheaper. It's not quite as good. Um, but hey, I suppose the question is, how much cheaper is it? Hmm. Hmm. Well, Herein lies the problem. I suspect Nintendo is saving a lot more money than they are passing on to us, the consuming public. Um, we're going to go by Amazon prices, as they are probably the easiest to look at. Currently, these are £100. Well, £99.99. Well, what can you spend a penny on these days? Not metaphorically. Um, and a 3DS normal one is £130, the Excel being £150. So, for the sake of 30 quid, you're getting some, a much nicer feeling unit with better buttons, etc., that folds up and has the 3D option if you want it. Hmm, if controls also feel a lot better, yeah, I suppose if you've got exactly the right size hands for this, then that may give it a point in its favour. But is it really worth £30 to have something that is literally, and by design, inferior in every aspect? Hmm, well, let's have another thought on this. Second hand. Currently, Near me in shops, you can buy a second-hand Nintendo 3DS mint condition, and it has to be mint condition, because if not, you 
but if you can't buy a second hand one, some idiot who scratched all the screens, they go very cheap. Um, they go for something like ninety ninety five pounds. So if you really were on a budget, you can in fact save five or ten pounds and get a better unit. I in fact bought my 3DS XL for a hundred pounds months and months ago. Um, second hand, obviously, but um, yeah, it was like new and in the box, and they hadn't even spent the Nintendo Stars coupon, so I was pretty pleased with that. And that, it, frankly, is a far better buy than that there. In fact, I think... Bugger, I wish... Oh no, I've got it here! I was going to say. Yeah, that's handy. I hadn't actually planned to do this, but I just want to check, yeah, the 3D... The, uh, the 3DS XL, which is the hardest name to say in history, um, yeah, it does have far bigger screens. So if you want far bigger screens, hmm, also better battery life and much more comfortable for pretty much everybody. Hmm, so I can't really recommend it, I'm going to be honest. Actually, it's just had a sudden thought. 3DS XL, right, difficult to say. 2DS. Have you noticed that Nintendo are getting a bit confusing with the old names recently? The worst example, of course, being the Wii U, which sounds like some strange upgrade to the Wii, and the uh, casual purchaser in the street doesn't even seem to realise it's a new console in this country, which is possibly one of the reasons it's been selling so poorly. Seriously, if you, they've recently released sales figures for it, and they are astonishing. Um, terrifyingly low. No wonder uh, you're not seeing many Wii U games on these shelves of second-hand stores. I don't think there's much market in them. I mean, yeah, 2DS, 3DS, are people going to think that you can't play 3DS games on the 2DS? I don't know. Marketing is difficult, and Nintendo do have weird names. So fingers crossed that that won't cause a massive problem. I mean, they're making big things on the box about saying it runs 3DS games, so fingers crossed there. Another point, going back to money, actually. This isn't perhaps the best thing if you're on a budget. Hey, it's a bit cheaper, you say, yeah. But do bear in mind that Angry Birds Star Wars costs £30 for the 3DS. Yes, that's that phone game that costs virtually next to nothing, is £30 on cartridge. So if you're really into cheap gaming, you're going to be looking at some sort of touchscreeny thing. Hey, it's a different kettle of fish, I know, and things are going to be a lot uh, more expensive in general when you've got proper controls and play proper games, but if you do want it just for casual stuff, bleh. But that's bollocks, really, because everybody wants it for Pokémon. In fact, really, that is a fair point. I think a lot of these are going to be used as a Pokémon machine. And, frankly, if you're going to be doing that, sod it. Don't go for the cheaper option that's not actually that much cheaper. It just feels cheaper in your hand. I think, really, this is more an attempt of Nintendo to capture a demographic. You know, people who uh, thought that it was a bit expensive on the old 3DS. Hey, now there's one sub £100. But actually, you know, look at it, look into it. You can get a lot better for cheaper.